What up, good everyone? OG over here from Player Essence, and welcome to their PE Nintendo Switch and Gaming News video. Today, we've got some awesome information for you guys, so let's go ahead and get right into it. Nintendo stays quiet when asked about a potential for N64 slash Game Boy Classic Editions. Now, this article is from Go Nintendo slash Japanese Nintendo News, so shout outs to both of them. And here's what they had to say on the matter. Wondering if Nintendo has plans for an N64 Classic Edition or a Game Boy Classic Edition, so are the gang over at Bamitsu. Takayo Shimizu of Nintendo to see if they could get some info. Shimizu completely dodged the question by saying that he wants to see a Famicom Mini and Super for Famicom Mini side by side in stores first. So Nintendo is probably not going to say anything about this because they have a lot of Super Famicom Minis, Super Nintendo Classics, and NES Classics to sell. This is still a big market for them. Why sit here and talk about some unnamed or unknown console which you probably have an idea for as far as what you want to do? Why talk about that when you still have that main console that just launched into the market? People are buying it at crazy rates. You have lottery lines for those. Plus, you're bringing back the NES Classic. And obviously, you can't have both of those and all the other classic systems all at once. You only have so much resources for manufacturing. So to me, it doesn't make sense to even address the question at all. Like, why would you even address it? Obviously, you're not going to say no, because then when you actually do it, because it would be a good idea, or at least somewhat of a good idea to have some type of classic virtual Game Boy type of deal or something like that, when you actually do it, people are going to say, oh, well, you lied. So, of course, I would have done the exact same thing, completely dodge the question and make sure that you talk about what you have right at this point which just launched which is the Super Nintendo Classic and which is the NES Classic which is coming back next year so yeah I would have dodged the question as well but do I feel that there's going to be an N64 Classic maybe but there's some hurdles to get around with that obviously you have to talk about the frame rate you have to talk about the issues with the N64 that was one of the things to me which made the N64 a little bit harder to play when it came to things it's just that games just didn't run Run well on this system. Obviously, they ran well for the time somewhat, but even back then, I was like, this kind of feels slow to me with a lot of the games. On top of that, you have to go over all the rare stuff that still belongs to Rare and Microsoft. Like, you can't have everything like GoldenEye. Is that going to be able to come back out again? Like, you have to worry about the licensing when it comes to things because some of the best N64 games were made by Rare and still owned by Microsoft at this point. Now, there's still plenty of other games that they can put on there. Don't get me wrong. Heck, you can fill that thing up with just Nintendo games like Majora's Mask, Ocarina of Time, Mario 64. I mean, there's a ton of games that you can do that you don't really need Rare at all, but there's a lot of great rare games on there though. Jet Force Gemini or whatever that game is, I remember playing that like crazy back in the day. Who owns that? But I know it was made by Rare. But either way, there's a lot of great games on there, but it would just be tough. So there's other things that you have to deal with when it comes to that. So overall, I think Nintendo knows what they're doing when it comes to the Super Nintendo and NES Classic. They've learned a lot when it comes to that, especially after the shortages and everything. The Super Nintendo Classic is much easier to find in stores. Shout outs to my boy Mikel Casanova once again for getting me the Super Nintendo Classic. And we will be having a giveaway on this channel once we hit 40k as well. But yeah, man, just focus on what you're doing right now and then move on to the other stuff later down the road. So what do you guys think about the potential of having an N64 Classic or a Game Boy Classic? Let me know in the comment section below. All right, and moving into the next article here. Tencent opens signups for Arena of Valor on the Nintendo Switch and mobile. So Tencent has announced that it has opened up North American registration for Arena of Valor. It's multiplayer online battle arena that is coming out for the Nintendo Switch, iOS, and Android. Arena of Valor has been a huge hit in China which is also the country that Tencent calls home. Tencent is the biggest gaming company in the world with stakes in Epic and Riot. Arena of Valor has over 160 million registered users. Expanding to North America will open MOBA up to a brand new audience. Now, MOBAs are some of the most popular games in the world, kind of getting into what this is all about. But most US gamers still think of PC top dogs like League of Legends and Dota 2 when they hear the term. Here in the States, Vainglory is one of the best known mobile MOBAs, but it focuses on three versus three fights, while Arena of Valor has the same five versus five setup as League of Legends and Dota 2. 
Vainglory is working on a 5 vs 5 mode. Arena of Valor will also reach a new untouched audience on the Nintendo Switch. MOBAs are rare for home consoles, but the Nintendo Switch's ability to work as a portable device with a touch screen could make it more ideal for the genre than a controller only platform like the PlayStation 4 or Xbox One. So let's talk about this just a bit because Arena of Valor is a huge game for Nintendo and there's a lot of stuff that kind of goes into this. Obviously China, Tencent, you want to get into that market. Well, this is the big game to probably launch it as far as the Nintendo Switch in China with this game. That will be big for players there, especially if they can get an enhanced version from the mobile version of the game. You can even get some button controls if you want it. So you have some more options there on a bigger, nicer device when it comes to things. Well, nicer in terms of actual playing video games, not nicer in terms of all mobile phones out there because there are some expensive mobile phones that are very nice. So I do feel that Tencent knows what they're doing here. Nintendo definitely knows what they're doing here. And they're not going to rush into the market like Microsoft than Sony did, where they rushed in with literally nothing and they failed there in China. The PlayStation 4 is not selling there. The Xbox One definitely isn't selling there. And those are big, bulky devices that the Chinese fan base doesn't really seem too fond of. Whereas Nintendo Switch is a smaller, sleeker device that can kind of suit itself to the MOBA as far as Arena of Valor. And this seems to be an exclusive for the Nintendo Switch. So there's a deal going on to where it's not going to come to PlayStation. It's not going to come to the Xbox for right now, at least. And it probably wouldn't work since you want to play the game mobile. But yes, I don't think it's going to be coming, but this is big for Nintendo. This could be big bucks for them when it comes to the Chinese market and opening up with this game right here. They can get a lot of different sales, and I'm interested in this too. So if you guys want to sign up as far as registering for the Arena of Valor game, check out the link in the description below. And remember guys, this is one of the games that Nintendo actually showed off at a North American Nintendo Direct when it came to things. Well, worldwide Nintendo Direct goes out everywhere. So they really want to push this here and they're pretty much prepping for that Chinese launch, but also making sure that other people get to play the game too. We don't get a lot of MOBAs, so this could be the big MOBA game for Nintendo Switch players and develop into its own little eSport type of deal where people go out and take their Nintendo Switches and participate in tournaments and all that. So let me know what you guys think about Arena of Valor. I was interested in it, but I haven't spoke about it too much. I wanted to get some more information about it and kind of see what was going on before I talked about it, and we definitely got that at this point. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. All right, and moving on to the last article here. My baby, of course, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. We've got another Twitter update from the official Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Twitter page. So let's go ahead and get right into this here. So October 18th, today, Monolith Soft shares a few screenshots showcasing a specific aspect of event scenes. Those take place in real time, so the time of day and the weather are affected. In the screenshot below, you can see the same event seen during the day and during the night. The third screenshot seems to be a drawing of Nia, presumably what she's reacting to during the event scene. By the way, Nia's line reads like this, wait, what is this? Is this supposed to be me? So once again, Nintendo showing off the facial animations, the expressions, the improvement over what they've done before. If you look at Xenoblade Chronicles on the Wii, you look at Xenoblade Chronicles X on the Wii U, and you look at Xenoblade Chronicles 2 on the Nintendo Switch, the evolution of the massive action RPG, you can definitely see the steps that they've taken. And I think even with this one, they made a specific goal to make sure that it was more story driven and focused. They've been showing off the rare blades that have a lot of personality because that was somewhat missing with Xenoblade Chronicles X. A lot of characters with cool personalities and different personalities outside of just a few here and there. Obviously, you had your main characters, but I think with this one, you really have your crew. You're not focusing on having like 15 different people that you can switch in and out of, all these different factions that you can join, and the kind of the genericness of your main character as well. You're really focusing on having your party, your crew like you had with Xenoblade Chronicles 1, going out and understanding each one of these characters, how they feel, their expressions, their attitudes, and Nintendo and Modern Soft have done a fantastic job of expressing that as far as that's what you're going to be getting over Xenoblade Chronicles X. Okay, because Xenoblade Chronicles X was more about mechs and the coolness of the game, the open world, the exploration, where Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is about exploration and it's about coolness somewhat, but it's more about the expressiveness of the characters. It's more about the blades. It's more about the relationship that you're forging and the story as far as the warring factions and what's going on. It's far more involved than I see with Xenoblade Chronicles X. So that has me personally hyped because I love the open world of Xenoblade Chronicles X. I really do love that, but I also love the story 
story base of Xenoblade Chronicles 1, and they're pretty much putting that all together when it comes to that, the huge open world with multiple titans, then also the story focus that you saw in Xenoblade Chronicles 1. So I'm super hyped for this game. December 1st can't come soon enough, but we got a ton of games to play before then. So let me know what you guys think about this. I would love to hear you guys' thoughts when it comes to Xenoblade Chronicles 2 on the Nintendo Switch and the latest information that we do have here. All right, Ninja, that wraps it up for this video here. Go ahead and check out the links in the description below. We've got Facebook. We've got Twitter. Go ahead and give us a like and a follow on our social media. really helps us spread the content of player assets across the interwebs in addition to YouTube. Also, make sure you check out our Patreon page. Pledge any tier. Be entered into win some awesome prizes. Plus, we have Discord voice chat and prize eShop tournaments. Also, make sure you check out our brand new YouTube live gaming page and consider sponsoring Player Essence. When you do so, it works very much like Twitch to where you can earn custom emotes themed to this channel and also get you entered into my friends list in order to participate in tournaments right here live. So check out the link in the description below to consider sponsoring Player Essence right here on YouTube Gaming Live. Also, make sure you hit that like button if you did like this video. let lets me know you guys want more content like this going forward in the future. And subscribe to Player Essence for the latest RPG, Japanese, and Nintendo gaming news. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video. Peace.